A true showing of skill isn't how well you can do yourself, but the ability to improve the results of those you lead. Having a bad squad leader like most things make me feel like there are termites in my bones and the only cure is violence. However, I do not want to be the only one to fix this every match. So to stop the gnawing, I'm going to explain how to play this role correctly. And just to get this out of the way, side effects of learning from this video may include increased win percentage, higher scores, trouble swallowing, better XP gain, and more friend requests. Probably. The squad is created. The name squad leader struggles to attract experienced players. What looks like homicide experience actually has murderous intent. Getting shook. Half track golf mark exact. Golf mark exact. Covering you, Monica. Good kill, good kill. To start off, it has to be understood that just saying fuck it, charge isn't going to work 9 times out of 10. Having bravado and saying follow me boys and rushing in all badass like feels fun but it's not a viable strategy and I get it deep down we're just all trying to make Riley Reed proud but we have to come up with viable strategies to take the points and to actually create viable strategies you have to have some base knowledge of the game and some base understanding of some facts that should influence all of your decisions going forward. First off, what your actual role as squad leader is. As squad leader, you are, in its most basic form, a mobile spawn point that can place visible markers for your squad on the map. The second base fact that you need for squad leading is to understand and to expect that four out of the five people that join your squad will not listen to anything you say. They will not take you seriously, they won't listen to your orders, it's just a video game and they're not going to listen to you like it's their fucking job. They're not going to roleplay with you. What they will listen to, however, is spawn points and callouts. I know I have to elaborate on what that actually means. So what I mean by people will listen to spawn points is people want the quickest way to the action. They want to just spawn walk 10 20 seconds and then be able to start shooting almost like pretty much immediately they want to be able to get stuck in off a of spawn not have to go on a five minute walk to actually engage the enemy that's not fun nobody wants to do that so if you're putting an op in the middle of nowhere but there's a garrison closer to the enemy even if it has a worse actual path to the enemy such as it's a hey you spawn behind a hedge there's an open field and then there's the enemy or you could spawn on this OP in the middle of nowhere you walk for three minutes then you get to a cluster of buildings and you might be able to find the enemy then even though the OP might have a better angle nobody's gonna spawn there if it means they have to go on a three five minute walk a good rule to remember is that people almost Before always pick spawns off of their convenience. East. The flip side of this is you can put Barrel the OP way too close to the enemy. If you put the it's OP really at the last safe point, something I like to call the LSP, also my peeled thing is like the front line, the firing point. Basically, if you are at a position and that is where you are firing from, your OP should be one or two pieces of cover backwards. For the simple fact that if the enemy knows where you're spawning, they're just going to light that spot up. And one of two things is going to happen. Either you are going to get spawn camped off of your OP and nobody's going to want to spawn there because they get spawn, shot, spawn, shot, spawn, shot. That's not fun and it doesn't help. Second, they're going to be able to push it and knock the OP really easily. So you want it one or two pieces of cover behind the actual place you're firing from. That way, you don't get trapped in a series of spawn wipes. I try to keep mine one to two pieces of cover back, or, depending on the terrain, 
10 to 30 seconds of a walk away from where you will be engaging the enemy. The reasoning behind this is number one, you won't get spawn camped and your OP won't go down as easily. Number two, you will have room to maneuver after you spawn. So that way, if you know where the enemy is and they know where you are, you'll be able to reposition after you die. So you don't keep popping up in the same spot and keep dying over and over. Number three, I try to keep it within 30 seconds walk time of the actual fighting. That way, you keep the convenience and you keep people spawning there. There's an incentive to spawn if they can very easily get into position to actually fight. Because that's what people want to do. If you do find your squad push back to the OP, just pick the OP up and move it back a little bit. Because a lot better lose a little bit of ground than completely lose the entire area you're fighting over. The second way to communicate with people is through markers. If you mark where the enemy is, if you mark a tank, you mark an OP, you mark infantry, you mark a garrison, people want kills. They want to be able to go in and destroy things. So if you are able to pair your markings with your spawn points, people are going to spawn, they're going to know where to go. They're going to be like, oh cool, there's an infantry marker over there. I'm going to go over that way and I'm going to shoot some people. So to recap, the base knowledge you need to know to make all of your decisions is that you are a mobile spawn point that can place markers on the map for your squad and that people will only listen to you through OP placement and those markers. Once you've done this for a little while and you've built up some trust between you and your squad, you can start feeding them information. Just start calling things out. Be like, hey, there's people here. There's a spawn here. Start calling out directions of where the enemy are, etc., etc., and they will start listening to you if you built up a rapport of having good spawns after, say, 20 minutes of gameplay. You should be able to sense when it's time to start doing this. Now we start getting to the point where I explain how to properly use this to your advantage. The first thing you need to understand is how to properly angle your squad. What is angling? Angling is directing your squad to attack a specific point from a spawn point. A direct A to B direction. Just pointing them and letting them loose. How you should decide on what angles to take are going to be entirely based on your team disposition, where you think the enemy is, and where the actual points are that you're trying to capture. For an example, say your team's trying to take A battery from the US side and there's already a squad going through the wheat field and there's already a squad going up this road here, straight in the front. What you can do is jump on the other attacks and just double up with the squads. However, if there's any sort of decent defense being put up, simply throwing more bodies in the same grind isn't going to work. It's just going to feed the enemy more kills because most teams of just random blueberries when they are actually defending are really good at focusing fire in one direction but they're not going to be good at splitting fire into multiple different directions so if you attack the point from a different direction you're going to catch almost everybody in the back looking away from where you are instead of just grinding straight in you're going to want to flank either to the left or to the right for this example you'll go over this way you'll run all the way through the field You'll get to this wall across this road here, you'll set your OP up, and you'll work down it with your squad. The way you do this is you basically set the wall where you're going to put your attacking OP as the point to uh, advance to from across the field. So you're just going to go A, B, put the OP up, turn your B into your A, and then put the B the rear of the point over here. And once you set that up, just have your squad just file right in the back of the point. And make sure that you prioritize killing as many spawns as possible. That way all of the positive pressure on the point has nothing to stop it. They'll just the defenders will die out and they won't be able to replace themselves and you'll be able to overwhelm the point with no problem. However, what if you're not up against the point yet? You're still trying to fight through the enemy team a few grid squares away from the point that you're trying to capture. How do you do that? Well, that's where map control comes into play. Map control is essentially just having the best ground on the map, always being in a better position than your enemy. The way you do this is just always ensure that you're staying in cover and you are controlling lanes of cover. Do this by angling your squad through the best ground 
to take the best ground and control the best ground. If you can't take the best ground head on, do the same thing as you did with the point. Just flank around it, hit it from the side or the rear, and take the best ground from the enemy. And work your way up to the objective by slowly grinding the enemy team out of the key terrain points around the point and leading up to it. The parts of the map that you want to control are heavily wooded areas, high ground, trenches, buildings. You want to prioritize anything with a really good field of view onto your next objective and or a, an area like a high hill or a building with good view on a large portion of the map so that you can lock down large portions of ground with one firing position. Once you've gotten control of one key terrain feature, you can use that to overcome the next key terrain feature and it's simply just one by one hop from terrain feature to terrain feature into the enemy objective. So in summary, establish good communication with your squad, make sure you've got good OPs, give a clear and easy and short direction to go, and just start going point to point and attack and push enemy teams off of the map. Oh, that was a longer video. Welcome to the end. I'm Goblin. I've been fantastic. And I guess I should probably end this with some sort of uh, lesson or whatever. Um, remember, kids, you can achieve anything with proper planning, training, perseverance, and violence.